Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is DMAC and as you can see today there's some brass dust over here. There's some crazy looking pins. So we're looking at uh, challenge lock pins. Um, and we're going to try and make him one in particular. And yeah, normally challenge lock pins. Uh, this is, these are these are a few that I've uh, I've made previously. Um, so we've got like a serrated tapered pin there with a little serration at the top. That one is got all sorts of sort of serrations and spooled sections on them. Um, and that one, oh, not sure what this one is. Let's have a little look. We've got a spooled section and then this kind of it's like a fanned out section there. It would cause all sorts of problems. Um, but today I thought I'd try, uh, I'd, I'd try and do on video um, making one of these pins. This is the first one I've ever made. This is, uh, I think these are known as piston pins. Uh, Lock Noob recently did a video on a challenge lock that featured these, so I'm not the first to do them. But when I saw the uh, saw the pins in the video, I sort of wondered how they were done. And um, as a challenge lock maker, I thought I've got an idea on how to do that. Um, so I just I just made this one just now. So I thought it'd be fun to um, show you on a video how we actually make them. So we've got, we've got there, we've got two sections um, that move independently, almost like a piston, uh, shaped like a piston anyway. We've got a couple of serrations on this section there. And it can work in the lock in various different ways. If I just grab a, grab a key pin there. So I guess you could use it depending on the key, uh, uh, on the rest of the sort of setup, the bitting on the key can be used in different ways. Um, the pin would kind of behave like a spool, but once this uh, this section here gets to the shear line, you're going to get some really deep kind of crazy full sets, especially if you put a bit of extra milling into the plug there. But I think you could probably, maybe not in this case, but you could probably use it that way up as well, and it would equally cause problems. Um, so the way we're going to do this, we've got Oh, get you in focus. We've got two sections to manufacture. So um, I think first of all, we'll do this outer section. Where's my focus gone? We'll do this outer section. And to do that, we're going to take a pin and hollow it out, but obviously not all the way through. Um, and then um, we can uh, see, see about uh, making this second section and putting the two together. So let me get uh, set up in the Dremel and um, we'll try to make that first section. So I just selected um, a blank key pin there, and I got this from one of these uh, sets here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to get rid of this rounded end. So I'm going to pop this in the end of the Dremel. Oh, lost him in there. There he is. We'll get him nice and secure. You'll probably have to put up with uh, this going out of focus and noise and things throughout this video because, as you can appreciate, not easy to do this on video. So I'm going to use this uh, fine tooth saw, see him just there, and I'm just going to cut the end off and what gives us a nice flat end to start with. focus there we go got a nice flat end so the way I'm planning to make this or the way I made this one and it seemed to work um, with this section here uh, is like a t-pin but on the end of it I've left a sort of a uh, ball section so it's essentially a ball joint this is um, so what we need to do is to make a channel uh, a, a recess in here to receive it um, in there sorry in focus a hole in there and then in order for the ball to locate in there we need to kind of uh, machine a channel around the inside of it. So what we're going to do uh, is use this pin vise with a one mil bit in it. And the first thing to do is to drill down into this. Um, we don't want to go very deep. We probably only want to go like a couple of mil. Uh, once we've got that hole, we can then look at making a, that channel inside of there to receive the ball of the ball joint. Um, so these self-center, you spin the... Um, uh, the pin up in the in the Dremel there, and just push the pin vice towards it. It should self-center, as long as we sort of don't, you know, you sort of keep it at a nice straight angle, and try not to go too deep. Just 
just see how deep we've gone. I think we can we can afford to go a little bit more. Tricky to do. There we go. I think that looks about right. So in, to make that channel, <clears throat> what I'm going to use is, this is an engraving bit which comes with a Dremel set. Usually I use this tip, um, use it for a couple of things really. You can use it to make uh, counter milling um, in the uh, plug chambers. Uh, but more commonly, I use that particular bit to engrave my challenge locks, you know, to write the name on it, my name, and whatever the challenge lock's called. But I figured if we use this, um, I can just put it inside there, force it outwards, um, and that's going to create a channel on the inside um, of that recess to uh, receive the ball of our ball joint. We don't want to go too much because I think these the walls of this are about half a millimeter. Yes, there's a little channel in that. I'm going to do a little bit more. I don't want to do too much because it will be very easy to go through. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to take off any rough edges that are on this. I'm going to put a little serration on there as well. decide now how long that we want this section to be whether it's too long at the moment yeah we could probably chop a bit off of that so if I turn him round easy to lose your pins inside the collet okay Okay, let's see what we've got now. Oh, knocking the camera a little bit. So there we go, we've got a couple of serrations on this one now. And um, we've got, if I can get him in, there we go, we've got our little hole there. And that's got a channel running around the inside of it that hopefully will receive the uh, ball. So I'm gonna uh, pause the video there and we'll select a pin in just a sec to make the uh, next section. All right, for this next bit, I've selected a slightly longer, longer key pin. Where's he gone? He's there. And what I'll do is fix him in the collet um, with that section on the outside. Yep, that should be fine. And we'll give them a good tighten down. So the idea with this part is we're going to make a T-pin out of this one. Um, now the bit that's inside the collet is going to stay at its original diameter. And all of this is going to be thinned right down. Um, but it, ordinarily if you make like a long T-pin for a pin in pin, you just put the file against it. And that will get thinner and thinner and thinner. And then when you release it from the collet, you'll have a T-pin. But what we want to do is for that ball joint is to create a, a round section on the end. So I think this is going to take quite a while to do, so I'll probably speed up this part of the video. Um, 
because I don't want to take too much off and I'll probably have to keep testing that against the uh, the, the section that we first made. So um, let's speed this section up. So we got him nicely thinned down that shaft and as you can see we've got a bald section on the top which hopefully should uh, pop into uh, this little recess on here. Now I don't even own a micrometer, perhaps if you did this would be uh, more of a precise um, process but I just kind of tend to do things by eye. Um, hopefully if I push this on here without it pinging off across the floor Takes a bit of force. I think he's almost on there. Oh, there we go. Nice little snap. And there we go. He is on. Fantastic. So let's just take this out and we'll see uh, what we've got. There we go. So we could just use this key pin like this. Uh, sorry, driver pin like this. If we go back to the original, I've got a much uh, smaller section um, just there. So what we need to do is to cut a little bit off of that, um, which is tricky, but I think we should be able to manage it. I don't want to take too much. Okay. Let's just have a quick look. I think if I cut that almost flush with a collet, we should be just about right. I'll just say quickly, when I cut um, when I cut that off, sometimes it leaves like a little, uh, almost a nipple uh, in the middle there. So I'm just going to file that flat. Whenever I cut anything off with this, it always, it always does that. You want your key pin or your driver pin to be completely flat. I think that looks about right. I just want to get rid of there's a slight burr just on that outer edge. So if I can, I just want to get rid of that and then we'll call it done, I think. It's tricky to do that at the best of times, but when you've got a camera and a light right in front of you, it is even harder. But there's just a slight burr there. Actually, that's loose in there. Might be okay. Let's give it a go. just got him right let's see what we got beautiful absolutely beautiful so there we've got our uh, our piston pin exactly what we want we've got a couple of serrations on that section there um, this inner part I don't think that's gonna come out I had a real job getting him in there actually 
And yeah, hopefully that'll cause all sorts of problems. Yeah, I think if you put a couple of grooves just either side of the um, uh, of that uh, pl uh, ch chamber in the plug, that would cause a really deep force set. I think it will cause a deep force set anyway because of the movement of that of that top section. Yeah, fantastic pins these. I'm not sure uh, who originally made them. I'm not sure who uh, sent the challenge lock to Lock Noob. That was the first time that I saw them. Let's just get that one and the one we made, the one I made earlier. I think we could have cut that top section. This, the one on the right there, is the one that uh, we just made. Could have cut that top section a little bit thinner. I prefer, sort of prefer the look of the one on the left. Um, but that's only the second one I've ever made and did it on camera. Um, but that one, I think the one we've just made seems to have a lot more slop in him, which is actually really good uh, for when you're picking uh, the challenge lock because that's going to provide deeper full sets and confusing feedback, which is what we want from our uh, challenge locks, isn't it? Anyway, thanks for watching today. Um, I really enjoy making these pins. I think what I might do is make uh, a whole bunch of them and stick maybe like five in a, in a challenge lock, perhaps with just a standard pin or something that looks a bit nice but rigid, maybe like that one, and then try picking it and seeing, uh, oh, it's gone. Yeah, just seeing, uh, seeing how he picks, because I've never tried picking them, and I think it's going to be give us a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you fancy giving this a go, I'd highly recommend it. It's fiddly work, but it's really rewarding, and it's going to be a lot of fun to uh, try and pick this one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Bye for now.